How's it going, folks? Hope you're all doing well today. I found an old book of mine the other day when I was clearing out the spare room in my house. The book is called A Grammar of Free Thought, written by a gentleman called Chapman Cohen and published by the Pioneer Press way back in 1921. I first read this book maybe over a decade ago when I was still a teenager and I like to think that it set me on the right path so to speak. It's a really good book, well written, excellent. I highly recommend it. The book was issued by the Secular Society, by the way. And I believe this author, Chapman Cohen, wrote quite a lot of other books as well. Although... I haven't come across any of his other stuff as of yet. May have to look into that. There are lots of passages in this book that are really well worth repeating. But for now, I'll simply satisfy myself by reading these excerpts from the beginning of chapter 3 which is called what is free thought so quote freedom of thought and freedom of speech stand to each other as the two halves of a pair of scissors. Without freedom of speech, freedom of thought is robbed of the better part of its utility, even if its existence is not threatened. The one reacts on the other. As thought provides the material for speech, so, in turn, it deteriorates when it is denied expression. Speech is, in fact, one of the great factors in human progress. It is that which enables one generation to hand on to another the discoveries made, the inventions produced, the thoughts achieved, and so gives a degree of fixity to the progress attained. For progress, while expressed through the individual, is achieved by the race. Individually, the man of today is not strikingly superior in form or capacity to the man of five or ten thousand years ago. But he knows more, can achieve more, and is in that sense stronger than was his ancestors. He is the heir of the ages, not as a figure of speech, 
but as the most sober of facts. He inherits what previous generations have acquired. The schoolboy of today starts with a capital of inherited knowledge that would have been an outfit for a philosopher of a few thousand years ago. It is this that makes speech of so great importance to the fact of progress. Without speech, written or verbal, it would be impossible to conserve the products of human achievement. Each generation would have to start where its predecessor commenced, and it would finish at about the same point. The function of speech is to transmit ideas, and it follows, therefore, that every embargo on the free exchange of ideas, every obstacle to complete freedom of speech, is a direct threat to the well-being of civilization. End quote. I will catch you next time, folks. Take care of yourselves. Peace.